So first, congrats on season three of On My Block. I mean, people have been raving about it. It's trending on Netflix right now and getting so many positive reviews. So, I mean, how are you feeling about the love right now? Um, you know, every time a new season comes out, you always get that nervous, you know, butterflies in the stomach kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. You don't know how the season's gonna do. You think you guys killed it. You think that you guys did an amazing job, but you just never know how the audience is gonna perceive it. Um, luckily, we have the most amazing fans in the world and they loved it. And uh, critically, it's doing pretty good. So, you know, we owe it all to the writers. What do you think it is about this show that fans have connected so much with these characters? I mean, I feel like the past three seasons has kind of been a journey. Everyone's growing, but the yeah. connection is still there. I think just the relatability of it, you know, uh, seeing the diversity. Uh, people are seeing themselves on our show in a way that they haven't seen themselves on other shows before. And uh, also, like you just mentioned, like, we're all growing in life and to see the characters grow each and every season, uh, seeing them tackle their own obstacles, seeing them, you know, handle their own situations. Uh, it's, it's just relatable. You know what I mean? Everybody yeah. Can, but you, I feel like everybody who watches the show can connect with uh, at least one or more characters. Like if you don't see yourself in Jasmine, you might see yourself in Jamal. Now, if you don't see yourself in Jamal, you might see yourself in like Spooky or Ramonse or Caesar, you know? Totally, totally. You and Sierra, obviously your relationship is kind of like the central romance of the show. So I mean, yeah. how has it been getting to have her as an on-screen partner? I mean, the best, you know, I say it in every interview, I couldn't have asked for a better screen lover. She's really cool. <laughs> um, I, we, you know, this was both of our first projects together. So uh, just growing, being on the journey with her, tackling each scene and, you know, asking, I'm like, hey, is it cool if I do this? She's like, yeah, go for it. Um, Funny story, actually, I, I I asked her, what scene was it? I think it was episode eight of season three. Um, it was the last scene before Caesar uh, says bye to Monte. I was like, hey, Sierra, I'm gonna try something in this scene, all right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bite your lip, <laughs> like in this kiss, in this kiss. And like our director heard it. He's like, you're gonna bite her what? I was like, I'm gonna, I was like, I don't know. I'm gonna try something. Like maybe it'll look cool on camera. And the director's like, no, you're not going to do that. Her dad is right there. No one would, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, ah, shoot. But, you know, I always make sure everything's cool with her. Um, and, and we push each other. Every time we do a scene, like, she always pushes me to the limits and she always pushes me to, uh, to better myself as an actor. And hopefully I do the same for her. And you mentioned that this is your first TV role, I guess, a recurring TV role. So, I mean, how has it been this whole experience for you? It's been such a journey. It's been such a roller coaster of emotions, uh, but it's more than anything an honor and a privilege, you know, representing the life we represent. Uh, being a Mexican American uh, in real life and on TV, I mean, that's like the biggest joy I could have uh, representing my race, you know, representing my people in a time where, you know, the man that we're supposed to look up to calls us criminals and savages, and uh, you know what I mean? Totally. So, it's nice to, to be put on a platform and use it. And then how has your life changed in season one? Like walking down the street, do people notice you? Like what's it like? Um, it's, it's, it's good. I mean, you know, I, I go to the malls. I can't go to the malls anymore without making or seeing at least a hundred fans and like <laughs> selfies. Um, yeah, I, I tend not to go out so much. I tend to just stay focused on my work, go to acting class, write, or, you know, just hang out at my house in my hometown. Um, just because, uh, I, I don't know. I had, a, I had a crazy experience happen one time. I had a guy pull out a knife. <gasps> yeah. Just because I was taking, I was taking like a picture of this girlfriend and, uh, uh, I don't know. It was just, uh, he read the situation wrong. So. Oh my gosh. That's oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. So, uh, yeah. Well, what has been like your best fan encounter? I went to Barnes and Noble one time and, uh, I was promoting my friend's book. I was just there to support and I tweeted it. And uh, literally like a hundred or like 200 fan fangirls came to the to the event and just like, they bought his book, they supported his book, they wanted some pictures. I was there with Brett and I was there with Julia and they were not expecting that. They thought, they didn't know that I tweeted it. So like, they, they just, uh, they were in for a surprise for sure. And then kind of a spoiler alert for people who haven't watched yet, but at the end of season three, we kind of see Caesar take over his brother's role um in the gang so looking ahead to season four obviously it hasn't been announced yet but if it does which it probably will like where do you hope to see caesar where do you think caesar will go in the next season uh, 
as an actor, I'm really excited to see where his story goes um, to tackle the darker side of, of, you know, life and those obstacles. Yeah. So as an actor, I'm really excited. As a person, I was really heartbroken to see where he's going in life. Yeah. Uh, but where I hope he's going is, uh, hopefully, I mean, he's out of the gangs by the end of season four. Hopefully he's living happily ever after, Monse, and hopefully he has hair. <laughs> I know the bald hair was a bit of a shock. I was like, I think that's him. And then he turned around. I was like, oh my gosh. I haven't done I haven't done the season with long hair since season one. Um and I'm dying to do it again. I'm dying to work with my long hair again, but it's all good. So you uh, had to shave your head. That was real, right? Yeah, yeah. That's they didn't no, they didn't even tell me that I was gonna shave my head either. Like <laughs> nobody got the script until like the last two days, four days. So when I read that last part, I was like, bro, I was like, I'm, about to, <laughs> I'm about to shave my head after I just filmed the whole, for one scene, a 30 yeah. second, like a 15 yeah. second clip. So I was bald over summer, but, <laughs> but it was cool, it was worth it. Is there like one thing that people may not know about you that you would share with Access Hollywood? I think, I think everybody knows everything about Everything, me. yeah? It's all online. It's all online. Um, maybe that, uh, hmm. I want to I want to write and produce my own show. I wanted it to be called Riverside. It's about um, uh, Riverside County, where I grew up. I grew up in a small town called Corona. I wanted to be based on like just that whole setting, that whole environment where I grew up. Growing up at the skate park that was located in like the center of my city, where uh, kids of all. You know what? I probably shouldn't be sharing this because some producer writer is going to be. You know, <laughs> yeah. Or but, someone might want to pick it up. Yeah, true that. True that. <laughs> But, uh, but no, I'm going I'm to I'm write and produce that and try to get that on its feet by 2021. What are you most grateful for or thankful for right now? Uh, I'm most grateful for, for FaceTime right now because <laughs> I can talk to my mom, you know what I mean? And keep yeah. up with her, make sure she's good and uh, keep her smiling. And uh, it was her birthday yesterday and Aww. heartbreaking not to be able to go over there and, and spend time with her. and. Uh, Cause usually we take her out every year. Yeah. At Wood Ranch, and then she loves just like driving around, and uh, she loves she loves to go to downtown Disney. So it, it was it's pretty heartbreaking not being able to do that. What's one thing you will never take for granted again? Everything, just being able to go outdoors to to your favorite restaurant, to your favorite park, to your favorite um, just everything. I mean the freedom. What's the your favorite feel good film that is getting you through this right now? Ooh, feel good film. Um. I just got Disney Plus. Oh, nice. Uh, so I've been watching a few Marvel movies. Nice. Um, fan of Marvel, so probably the whole the whole saga, all that stuff. What are you binging right now? I just finished binging Elite season three. It's fire. It's so good. <laughs> uh, I'm currently working on Tiger King, which is really entertaining. What are you doing now that you don't usually have time for? Uh, working on the script. Yeah, working on, on Riverside. Um, Getting that on its feet, and uh, now that I like have to stay indoors, and I have no excuses to make. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think everybody should be using this time though to to really be working on that thing that they've been saying that we're gonna work on tomorrow and tomorrow and the next day. Because like now we have the downtime. Now we have, uh, you know, all the time in of April. You know right. what I mean? Right. <laughs> Basically. So we got to focus on that because once this thing ends what's going to be made of that time we're going to look back and be like oh shoot i could have done this but now i got to go back to reality and be really? like five and this and that it's like no nah, like do your work right now invest invest time in yourself right now